And we're back with On Ice with Ernest Skinner, Season Uno, Episode Cinco. And if uh, you don't know what that is, you're going to have to go watch Dora the Explorer a few times. But uh, I'm here with my guest, Annette Bouchard. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for having me. I uh, reached out to Annette uh, because Annette does something that a lot of people appreciate. She's a volunteer in all aspects of, uh, of her life, aside from her full-time day job. Um, with the Greyhounds, and uh, I inquired when I found uh, you singing, singing very beautiful by the way Thank you. how did you get into singing for the Sault Ste. Marie Greyhounds at the Hound Games? I remember years ago I think it was in the late 90s um, I read a, an article that Randy Russon had wrote right um, saying that they were looking for volunteers uh, they didn't have anybody um, they were having I think they were having an issue they you know the team might have been folding at the time for other reasons and okay. uh, I just thought hey you know I I have some connections. I know some people that that would be interested in doing it, and um, I went right there to get involved and nice. and thought, you know, why why can't we volunteer uh, and keep our team here and keep our uh, our local yeah, hockey like going? Every little aspect of um, saving money helps, especially if it, if it was it was that time. Might That's have right. been the time that I think they might have been uh, worth considering selling it to CompuWare, mm -hmm. Detroit. And that's when the Esposito was involved? Right. Okay, so that was then. I, um, I think it was. Uh, like I said, it was quite a while ago. Not really. I just know that they were looking for different volunteers. Mm -hmm. And I knew that was an area with the national anthem that I could help out mm -hmm. in. Um, and uh, so, and I think at the time, too, uh, James Warner Smith, um, right. he would sing it a few times, too, when they were stuck for someone to sing. Right. And I just thought it would be a good idea to have some different people. We have good talent in the Sioux, and I just thought it would be a great idea to have some people step up and uh, do a little bit of volunteering there for that um, Chip in, in that they area. Can, right. That's right. So what, how did your singing career start? Was it um, a shower um, singer first or uh, no, a shower quartet? Uh, no, not at all. Um, uh, I was eight, probably about eight years old. Um, I used to sing for the Kiwanis Festival. Um, and my dad, uh, who uh, would push us, uh, my brother, my oldest brother is also involved in uh, music and he has been for over 40 years. Okay. Um, he can play guitar and sing like nobody's business. Um, my dad was right into music. My dad also played guitar a bit and sang too. So he kind of got us going on it. Mm -hmm. um, and I did uh, sing in some different ba local bands. And I was oh, I maybe, was young. I was I was let's, young. Let's six, hear that. six or seven years old, mind you. Oh, okay. Uh, a lot out yeah. at the Airways Motor Hotel when it was there. Okay. Nice. And um, mind you, I wasn't allowed in the bar. I was too young. So, so I would, they had you singing in the I parking lot. I would sit lot? in the restaurant. No, but I think sometimes <laughs> I would have wanted to. <laughs> <laughs> so that's how it got started nice. and uh, I, then I just pushed myself and uh, I enjoy it and I, I sang uh, in and out of town and um, I had a really good experience uh, quite a few years ago I went on a trip to Nashville and I sang in a couple of the uh, the bars down there oh, right. uh, wow. and I really enjoyed it I met a lot of really nice people um, Did you sing Hound's Power or anything down well, there? Well, I, I tried it. Yeah, what, and what happened? They were just kind of looking at me. They're going, thinking a the dog race is next door Yeah, something? what's going on? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, so I, I, I traveled a little bit, met a, met a lot of people, had some a good, ex very good experience. That's awesome. Yeah. So how many years have you volunteered that you were telling me about the Elks, but um, let's go with the Greyhounds. How many years have you volunteered for the organization? Probably since the late 90s. Um, uh, I'm going to say 93. Okay. Yeah. So that we're looking so, at about uh, 18 years. Yeah. Wow. Maybe 30. Um, yeah. Yeah, I guess right. Yeah. <laughs> we get Quite edit, a while. Edit that you, out. I don't have the online what? calculator. When you enjoy it so much yeah. and you it, it helps you feel good about yourself and you're helping someone else, you lose track of how many years. The, wow. The, the years and the time, it doesn't matter anymore. During that time... Um, you must have come across some exceptional hockey players. Um, notwithstanding this year, um, what, what kids um, do you remember that made an impact? Is there any kids or are they all, they're, they're just every every kid was just, just good? Or? I, I never pinpoint just one mm -hmm. Greyhound hockey player they're or, always respectful or any one kid on a team. Uh, I think they're all good people. I think uh, they're all good players. 
and I think they uh, they give it their all when they are out there. And, right. And uh, and I and I really think uh, the support that the Sault Ste. Marie gives them, mm -hmm. I, I think I think they need that, and yeah. it makes them makes them do do better. Um, but I think they're all good players. Yeah, they, they're good players. I like them all. And you know what? From the top down with the organization, they do a lot of good things. They bring them to. Um, you know, the hospital or arch or, you know, yes. uh, the, the kids skate. I think they have a Timmy skate coming up, but could be wrong if it's Timmy's this year, but they're doing a yeah. skate. So it's, it's just great what they do. And uh, these young kids, I remember being a young kid when I was, um, you know, 12 years old, like 10 years ago. Um, I remember <laughs> 10 years ago being a young lad and, um, but, you know, joking aside, um, yeah, they, you look up to them and, and they're taught at that age to show respect, which goes hand in hand when they become a professional and they have to be respectful. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, we're going to take a quick break. Can we get back? We'll come, we're, when we come back, we'll be back with uh, Annette Bouchard once again. Let's go, Greyhounds. Let's go. And we're back with uh, On Ice with Ernest Skinner, my guest, Annette Bouchard, volunteer extraordinaire. Um, Annette, are you singing as many this year? I remember you, I saw you last year singing a beautiful uh, cup. Well, Thank you. I was singing you. Uh, <laughs> I saw you singing very nicely a couple times last year, and then this year I think it's only once or twice. Are you singing, how does that work? Do you sing intermittently or when it's your schedule uh, allows, or how does um, that work? I think uh, what they've done the last couple of years is uh, there used to be an onset schedule. We used to know a few weeks ahead of time because um, uh, there's not also myself, there's also other, other uh, singers too. Mm -hmm. um, but I think what they've done now is they have included the uh, schools um, not necessarily a certain grade. I believe they've included the schools, mm -hmm. and I think there's 40 schools, and I think it's great. I think right, um, right. it's nice to give them a chance to shine. Mm -hmm. um, it's a really good experience. I was young too at yeah. one time. And it gets the butterflies out because yeah, I remember back in the day. It gives them a really good experience and a really good opportunity. Yeah. Like you have no idea how it does feel to sing in the front of 3,000 or 4,000 people. I can only imagine for um, sure, yeah. Not only that, for me, um, and I'm sure the teachers too and the kids, I think um, it's an honor to be able to do that for Sault Ste. Marie and it's an honor to be able to do the national anthem for your country. For your country, right, right. So I think it's great that the kids are getting involved and um, you know sometimes when they're they're singing and I'm just off to the side or I would do the American one and the schools would do the Canadian one you just look over and those kids are like wow yeah, um, yeah, for sure. Look at all the people, and I'm I'm singing here on the Greyhound. Ice. Everybody's looking at me, and yeah, yeah. and they, they love it, and it just it's great to see them. Uh, it, it's great to see them smiling. I'm sure they it makes them feel good about themselves. Yeah. wasn't there a time when you're the only one in the city that could per, um, professionally um, sing the the American national anthem? Yeah, I do remember a time uh, there that I know that I am aware of or that I know of. Um, nobody really sang it, thought about learning it, could sing it, or wanted to sing it, I mm -hmm. guess. And um, I can't remember uh, exactly. I think it was for a um, stock car race uh, in the Sioux and oh, the Sioux. a few out of town. Maybe Kinross, where Jerry I, is at? Yeah, okay. yeah. I did sing at Kinross for a long time. And I um, had to learn the American National Anthem. See, that's and the funny thing you say we were talking in the uh, green room, the American National Anthem. I think that was one of the ones that was been that's inbred in, in most Canadians on the border because especially if you watch sports, right? Mm -hmm. It's always there. But I remember for so many years growing up and I was singing the Canadian National Anthem with the Quatre Bras et Pour Télé Paya, the American, just because I would watch Aki on Channel 13. It was mm -hmm. the French channel. Yeah. But um, yeah, so that's great that and they and they stepped up and asked you to sing it because yeah. nobody else could sing it. Yeah, I guess word got out. I I would say, and uh, I was always getting calls. Hey, can you uh, do the American national anthem for us? Can you? Um, so yeah, I started doing it. I I really think I started doing it at Kinross, mm -hmm. and uh, then your reputation built. It my reputation built, and I also uh, do it. Uh, started in the '90s. I was doing it in. Uh, 
Onaway, Michigan, at Harry Moran's uh, stock car racetrack there, just outside of Indian River. I don't know where that is. And uh, I was going to say, I don't think I've ever <laughs> seen you there. <laughs> That's my And, uh, of course, out at uh, Laird uh, Raceway and uh, Greyhounds. Uh, I also do uh, Sioux Thunderbirds. And, okay. Uh, yeah, I'm doing Sunday uh, this weekend for the Sioux Thunderbirds. They're playing Timmins. So I also volunteer for them. That's great. And uh, so, how many days? How many days a week do you think you sing on average per month hockey season? Two or three. So you're singing about eight or ten shows a night. Uh, a week? No, maybe about maybe twice. A I mean, week. A, I mean a month. A month. A, so month. a month. Eight um, or ten a month. Probably about four or five times a month. Oh, okay. Because the hockey teams aren't always here every weekend, so they're yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, and some weekends I do, I remember not long ago there was a week I was doing, I can't remember exactly the things I was, but I remember I was busy Thursday, I had to sing the anthem for something and it was Friday and then Saturday and Sunday and it, it really, oh and, and Sue Steelers football I think just near the end of their season, so then hockey was starting mm -hmm. so I was involved in both and I remember one weekend uh, back in September and it was, uh, I was busy Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday and uh it makes your weekend go by fast. Well, I, can, I can imagine. <laughs> yeah, and, and there's yeah. a lot of people that don't realize that uh, without volunteers, a lot of these um, uh, businesses, uh, organizations, uh, teams, local teams, wouldn't be able to get their feet off the ground. Like there's a lot of behind yeah. the scenes. So everybody needs some, a singer to sing, especially for an Ontario Hockey League game. I'm pretty sure it's actually it's a, it's a prerequisite. I don't think... Uh, you can get by with not having with not a singer having one it. night because it's just part of, you yeah. know, what they're doing. Yeah. But yeah, um, yeah and I'm, pe people should appreciate more of their volunteers, not only in that in in, in sports, but right. in, in other aspects of life. And uh, we're gonna go to a break in a second here. I didn't mean to cut you off, but um, and we'll talk about a little bit of your work with the Elks. Okay. We'll be back in one moment with uh, Ernest Skinner on ice with Ernest Skinner, my guest, and that Bouchard. Let's go, Graham. Let's go. And we're back with On Ice with Ernest Skinner, season uno, episodal cinco, <laughs> and my guest Annette Bouchard again. Uh, thanks, Annette, for all your volunteer work with the Greyhounds organizations. I'm sure they appreciate it. Um, you were saying something about how you originally got the uh, the gig, per se, uh, Dr. Lukenda, who everybody um, admires. Um, he had a little bit to do with that? Yeah, I first went to what then was the SR Center and uh, talked to... Don't mention that name. I'm, I'm just joking. <laughs> I was going to say, oh darn. I'm um, just teasing. And talked to uh, Jerry Liscombe and mm -hmm. he actually said, oh, you know, go in, uh, here's the phone numbers and contacts. So I uh, couldn't actually get directly get a hold of uh, Lulu Kenda, mm -hmm. um, but I did uh, meet uh, Dr. Nanny and Dr. Fabro, where I dropped off a little biography about myself. Wow! And they got it over to uh, Lulu Kenda, and and he actually uh, okayed it at the time. Um, it wasn't long after that that I, I I did get a call from the Greyhound office. Wow! And of course that was also at intertwining with around the same time where you know we were looking for people just to volunteer in that area mm -hmm. and I wished we could have had more areas there where we could use our volunteers for yeah so you were saying that yeah you wish there, mm -hmm. there would be some more areas and um, I'm sure the hounds organization would appreciate it. I know that they do have uh, some volunteers in different areas but um, yeah, if anybody out there is looking to help out the club I would suggest you get a hold of Jerry Liscombe <coughs> and see if there's anything you can do um, and your work with the Elks, which, um, and you said there's a tw there's a tie-in with the Hounds and the jerseys and things yeah, like that. Yeah, um, I uh, am a member of our local uh, Elks Lodge on Bay Street. I, I've been on the executive for f quite a few years. Um, I did. I, I held a presidency term for a year. It was okay. it was really challenging. But aside from that, um, when we it's all ch it, the Elks is all charity. Um, so aside from that, we have different fundraisers um, and we have never had a problem going to the Greyhounds uh, and they ha always, always are very good with us, either with tickets or a basket of, of goodies or yes. uh, something and I have to commend them for that. Um, they've been really good to us. Uh, sometimes when we sell tickets on our TV promotions or um, they allow us to put a table in the lobby mm -hmm. and sell tickets. So very good. 
Very good. I want to say thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Yeah, they, they've been really good to the community. And um, um, i got to tell you, we've got a gem with a new coach. I talked to him on the phone uh, this week, John Dean. And mm -hmm. wow, these kids are, are gem. And I know we talked about we're not going to get into statistics. You don't want me to ask <laughs> you statistics. But the, yeah. <laughs> the Hounds are dominating right now. They're second in the whole O oh, at their age. Nobody would have thunk it. And um, speaking with John Dean, I'm telling you this this guy's got it he sends goosebumps down my back when he talks he talks with uh with such a purpose but he's he's a mm -hmm. humble guy and uh you're saying and we didn't want to center out one kid but you were saying one of the most recent favorite players that you've had in the organization is uh the cold kid frosty frost i like frost yeah uh, gentlemen i i like watching him play yeah i mean i like all the players yeah i like going to the games i love watching hockey um, I'm not your typical uh, know all the stats and who's who and what what and, well, and how long they've been them. on the team and stuff like See that. See my other episodes, but, neither uh, am I. Every, <laughs> every uh, yeah, I saw a couple of I your episodes. Lived. I saw a couple of your episodes. I added, no, I, I added a lot. <laughs> but uh, I do like Frost. I think um, he uh, plays hard. Uh, he, he gives it, I mean, he has to. He gives it his all. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm sure they, the players have times when they're going out there on a game where they're tired or they've, well, yeah, uh, yeah, they, I mean, they travel and uh, I, I just, I, I couldn't do what they're doing and uh, I think they're playing great this year. And, oh my God, yeah. And I hope, uh, I, I hope it, you know, I hope they go further. I hope it's, I, I think it's great. I know it's disappointing. You know, when they win, 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 and then they have a couple losses. I know people get, you know, that, disappointed. That's the or, funny thing is we're been, we've been blessed over the last couple that. years. That's we don't right. get too many loses. No, that's right. So like I always year, tell yeah. people just in general conversation, oh, well, you know, they say, oh, well, they lost. It's okay. How did they play? Did uh, they play all they could give that night? Yeah, yeah. it's okay that they may have lost a game yeah. or two. Um, but I think they I think they're a great team. I think they give it their all and, and everybody involved I think is doing a great yeah, job. Yeah, there's a there's a big buzz around the Sault Ste. Marie hockey Greyhound community yes, and a big buzz around is. the OHL. I think a lot of uh, the coaches are like they're looking back saying, Well, we didn't expect this from the Hounds this that's year. That's right, that's right. But we're gonna take uh, our final break. Um unfortunately I'd like to sit with uh, Annette for, for a long time, but we can. We've got one more with on ice with Ernest Skinner. We'll be back. Let's go, Greyhounds. Let's go. And we're back with On Ice with Ernest Skinner, segment U, if you're French, and uh, <laughs> episode Sink, if you're French. Uh, back with Annette Bouchard, my, my lovely guest here. Uh, we were talking about um, this year and um, our expectations with the Hounds dominating, and then the fact that we could have lost Barrett Hayden. It seemed like there was question marks there. And then we could have lost... Um, Hollowell could have stuck up, and then you know, I mean, right now Rasmus Sandin is gonna kind of make me look uh, a little silly because I was almost pushing that he was coming back, and I was the prophet, not Chris Key. But uh, Rasmus had a point last night with the Marlies, and um, that's gonna really make a big difference whether he came back and we just excelled another tenfold, or right now he's probably not, not coming, coming back. back. Um, I have a question about that because I, I just read uh, the little bits and pieces about it. Um, do, you, do you think it's going to really hurt, is it going to hurt us without having uh, Rasmus? Uh, I mean, I, he, was, he is a good player. I, I liked watching him. Yeah, I don't think um, it was going to per se hurt us, but what it is is um, he would have given us um, an extra dynamic on the team, right? right. He's such... He is such an incredible force on that uh, back end that it's just like having another um, all star on your team. So, right, right. Yeah, by yeah. him not coming back, it's going to be. It's a little um, bit of a loss. It's, it's, it's a big, yeah, it's a big loss. You know, um, because he's at the age where most of the time they come back, they don't stick up at 18 years old. Right. And so it's, it's going to be quite unfortunate. Um, and it's looking the way that he's not coming back. So, we're just going to have to rely on Coach Dean and Coach uh, Smith and Tardif um, to help us out. And I'm sure Kyle Raftis is already uh, looking at the team and thinking, wow, if this team keeps um, achieving the way it is and keeps growing under these great coaches, he might have to make a move to get one more piece of that puzzle to um, you know, maybe push us through a first or second round of the playoffs. Mm -hmm. So 
we're going that way. And so with the Elks, what, what do you do outside? Um, like we were given examples how they, they give you, um, the hounds would be gracious enough to give you shirts and stuff. Mm -hmm. tell, us, tell us a bit about the Elks. The Elks, uh, we have uh, people, uh, men and women, um, that some people think the Elks is just for, for men. It's not. Uh, mm -hmm. Men and women can join the Elks. Um, we have uh, different functions that go on uh, upstairs. We in our banquet hall. We also have the banquet hall that you can rent for okay. sports venues or whatever venue we you want. Mm -hmm. um, we uh, it's all ch it's all for charity, um, and uh, we have um, different functions of our own. Uh, like we have a TV draw okay. during the year. Uh, we have our our bar downstairs uh, on Saturdays we have uh, matinees uh, from uh, two to six, okay. and it's all different types of music. Uh, it's not just country. It's not just rock and roll. Mm -hmm. We have uh, different bands every Saturday, okay. and it's um, nice because I will tell you, uh, a matinee is a good thing to have. Uh, it does bring out some of the seniors that don't get a chance to go out in the evening. Okay. Um, yeah. And uh, they enjoy that, um, and they do bring their dancing shoes. It's do amazing. They? Is that right? It's amazing how the seniors they love to dance. They like to shake their they booty. Love, they like to shake their booty. Oh, <laughs> they love dancing, and uh, yeah. So it's um, and we when we have uh, fundraisers. It's a very busy place. It's. It's, um, you know, we've had ups and downs with it, um, but I'm sure um, we're going to be able to pick it back up again. Um, yeah, it's it's all for charity. Perfect. Yeah. So when's the next time you're going to be singing for the Sioux Greyhounds? Because I'm sure all our viewers are going to want to get out and see that. So you're going to have to make sure you got your A game. Yes. Uh, we don't want a B-side <laughs> performance, but I'm sure that you won't bring that. So when's, when are you singing I next? I believe it's and, December and the 2nd, and uh, there is a school that will be there doing the Canadian uh, National Anthem, and then I will uh, will do the American one. Awesome. Of course, the American one's always first. Uh, there are the, And that's another thing. Uh, lots of people have asked me this question. Well, you're Canadian and you're from Sault Ste. Marie. Why do you do the American one first? Because the American team is the guest team. Oh, yeah. People and ask that? Yes, I've been asked that. Yes, I've been asked I'd, that. I'd be like, well, that's an old brainer, yes, but whatever. Um, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, we're going to segue a bit from uh, Annette, my nice guest here, and Greyhounds into something real interesting to everybody, including, well, everybody. <laughs> well, my column rock talk about my where I interview uh, and review heavy metal musicians, hard rock musicians, etc. I have got in front of me two tickets to Steel Panther, December 1st at Kuwait Casino, Dreammakers Lounge, All-Star Promotions. You can't miss this show, people. It's going to be it's going to be a part comedy show. It's going to be a heavy metal act, and there's a bit of risque material in there if you know what I mean. Now. To win these tickets, I'm going to give one away to each person, so you can bring someone, uh, which means you get to buy a ticket. What you <laughs> got to do is go to Google YouTube or go to YouTube and type in Hellfest Steel Panthers Live and watch the whole show and tell me the name of the ninth song in the set list. And when you get that song, email your answer to Ernest Skinner. 2671 at yahoo.com and when I get those answers um, if I get uh, 10 20 or 30 I'm gonna put them all in the hat and I'm gonna pick out two and from there I'll contact you or I'll put in my next rock talk and you can go see the show on December 1st once again thanks for watching on Isothernus Skinner and thank you very much and that for my, you very being much my guest. for having me let's go, Graham. Let's go.